in this tutorial I'll show you a variety of easy ways to add a patina to glass bottles using various spray paints and crackle paint. Uh, the paints that I'll be demonstrating, the frosted glass, chalkboard paint, uh, mirror glass, and uh, metallic, all these spray paints can be found in uh, hardware stores and some craft stores. I've seen these in Home Depot, I've seen them in Lowe's, I've seen them also in Michael's. Uh, Michael's Craft Store had the mirror glass and the frosted glass. I've also found both of those uh, in a Walmart, so um, you just need to check out your local stores to find some of these products. The other thing that I'm going to cover is once you create the patina with one of these sprays or with the crackle, I'll talk to you about how to apply um, transparency film and vellum to the glass. Now let's get started with me walking through how to spray each of these uh, products onto glass. So the first one I'm going to start with is the frosted glass. You've seen me do this before in the tutorial for the apothecary. And you just want to make sure the can's really shaken up. And then you just want to lightly spray. You notice I've got a um, skewer with a paper towel. Hold the bottle in place. That way I can turn it and I can get the bottom too. I think this is the easiest way to do it. You're just going to spray it a little bit and you're going to see it's, you just kind of have a milky film on it. Let that dry a little bit before you put the next coat on because, you know, you... You really need to decide how thick you want the frosting to be. You can you can have it so it's still a little bit transparent, or you know you can put several coats of this on until um, it's completely opaque. Just kind of what you want to do. The next one um, is chalkboard paint, and I, the reason I picked this is I just really like the matte finish. And if you just want a really smooth matte finish, it just works so nicely. And of course, if you have beautiful handwriting, then you can uh, use chalk and actually um, write on the bottle or any glass that you are, you are coloring. So you're going to, like you, you saw me do here, I just sprayed some on, got a coating on. You're going to want to let that dry. You notice how it's really shiny right now. It's going to get very matte and um, I can still see the uh, skewer in there a little bit so I know that I, I want to put some more on. If you don't want to, if you just want to have it a little bit transparent, just add a little bit of this. Otherwise, let it dry and then go ahead and put uh, more coats on until you get the thickness that you want. This next one is just a metallic paint and it's a metallic gold and it will give you a gold look but it also has kind of a little bit of a sparkle in it and just like with the other paints you're just going to want to put one coat on and let that dry and decide if you want to leave it at that point or you want to have additional uh, additional coats of the paint you can see it's really shiny right now it's going to get a little less shiny just a little bit more matte but it does look really metallic this next one is a mirror uh, glass, a, I'm going to use looking glass paint to create a mercury glass look. And it's a, a multi-step process. I'm going to start by spraying a light layer of the looking glass paint. I'm going to let that dry for just a second or two. And I'm then going to spray it with a mixture, uh, a water bottle with a mixture of half um, vinegar and half water and depending on the size of your bottle uh, you might want a finer spray if it's a small bottle and you might want a heavier spray or, or, or uh, a fatter spray if, if you're using a large bottle so you, you might want to use some a big sprayer like the size of a Windex bottle or something since this is small I'm gonna go ahead and use this little one and I'm just gonna spritz it with water and you'll see the water is gonna beat up on the paint and what this does is it kinda eats away at the paint and then you want to come in and just kind of dab it and you're going to end up removing a little bit of the paint as you do this. And I wonder if you can see here on the camera of course I'll give you some better shots of this when it's done but you can see how some of the paint has come off down here at the bottom so I'm just kind of lightly tapping the bottle with this paper towel. And once I've done that, 
I'm going to come back in and give this another spray, light spray of the looking glass paint, or the, I keep calling it looking glass, but it's, uh, yes, looking glass. I keep thinking of Alice. Then I'm going to come back in, let that kind of dry just a little bit. Then I'm going to come back in. You can see I'm just getting this really mottled look. You can see all the little dots where the where the um, the spray. Spray some more. Now you can do this as many times as you want to get the look you want, but it just really looks gives you that look of the old mercury glass. You have a huge bottle. You can do it from the inside, which makes it look really cool. But with something this small, there's just no way to paint, spray the inside. You know, and you can let this dry in between and just decide, okay, do I have I done it enough? Do I want it to, to do it some more? Um, and with all these techniques, if you use just some Windex and a bl razor blade, you can remove all the stuff, all the things I've shown you. You can remove all these paints and start completely over again if you don't like how things are turning out. So I did another spray on the same coat. You know, and if you decide, oh my gosh, I've removed too much. I don't want to remove any more. I want to put just a little bit back. You know, just very lightly spray. So it's kind of all up to you as to what you want to do. The last thing I want to show you is not a spray paint. It's a crackle technique and it uses the Deco Art Crackle product. It's two steps and I thought I'd throw this one in too because I think it gives the bottles a really antique look and um, it, it's the kind of product that you could put on anything to crackle it. Um, it's so simple I'm not even going to go through it. The, the instructions are on the bottle and one of the things I really love about this product over some of the others I have used is it's almost foolproof. Um, you don't have to wait until the first step is dry just to the right point to apply the second step. It's none of that. You know, you basically apply the first coat uh, for the first step and then let that dry and then apply the second coat and let that dry. And then there are instructions on the bottle that talk about if you want smaller crackles or larger crackles, then you simply apply uh, more coats of each of the crackle depending on each step of the crackle depending on what you want to do. And then of course once you have this crackled um, then you can uh, do other things to it and I'll show you what else I've done with uh, the bottle after it's been crackled. Now um, the next thing is I the other bottles that you saw me spray earlier are all dry and so I thought I'd just bring them all out and show you how they ended up. So you can see all the different um, colors and, and, and te uh, textures that I've added to the bottles. And then I'll go through and I'll talk to you about uh, adding more things to the bottle in terms of how to add things like transparencies and how to add things like vellum and have them adhere to the bottles. Before I do that though, I want to show you one more thing because I want you to see it before I change how it looks and that is this bottle here. What I've done is I've applied some stickers, metallic stickers to the bottle and then I've also glued on um, a couple of uh, metal pieces here that are very easy to bend so it was easy to bend them to attach them to the bottle and I want you to see at this step because I'm going to paint over this whole thing and then I'm going to use uh, a product to bring out all of the dimension of all the pieces that I've stuck on here, the stickers and, and the uh, metal bit here. So I wanted you to see what it looks like before I actually spray it. The inspiration for the bottles came from this uh, collage sheet from Alpha Stamps, which I absolutely love. Um, I think it just has so many possibilities. And when I saw this sheet, I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I know you could color, ink this, or stain it, or do whatever you want, but I'm going to work with this color scheme of black and white, and then mix it in with silver, or black and white, and mix it in with gold. Now, um, 
part of what I'm going to do is show you how to use these images in different ways to apply them to the bottles. Of course, there's paper. Um, and then another option would be uh, to use a transparency. And then another option, let me just move one out at a time, to use transparency film. The other would be to use vellum on the bottles. And then, of course, you could also use a glossy version of the paper to give you a little bit more shine. You might not be able to notice that so much on the camera. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about how to apply each of these to a bottle. Um, the thing that I used for all of them is a Xyron machine. And the reason I used a Xyron machine is to, um, you want to create a smooth and even application of of the adhesive to the uh, back of whatever material you're going to put onto the bottle so that you don't see it. And the other thing is that uh, you want to use something that's dry that's not going to cause the ink in the material that you're using to run or perhaps to make the material that you're applying to the glass run. And so the Xyron is the easiest thing to use and I also use the Xyron for applying all of the um, ribbon and, and lace that you see on the bottles when I, when I walk you through each example. Um, I want to talk a little bit more though about the transparency. Now depending on how the transparency is printed, if it's printed using a laser printer or it's printed using an inkjet printer makes a difference and the reason being with a laser printer, if you apply anything to the transparency that's liquid, the ink will not run. If, if you are using something that is printed with an inkjet, which is probably, if you're printing these yourself, you're probably printing them with an inkjet, then if you put anything on here, any kind of water, um, if you put glues, liquid glues of any kind, anything with a lot of moisture in it, it's going to make all this run. Now, one alternative is to print it mirror image and, uh, and to glue the, uh, attach the transparency to the bottle, reverse so that the ink part is um, towards the bottle. But the only problem is, is if you add any liquid around the edges, that might seep into the edge of the, of the transparency and then cause your, your image to run. Now, if you purchase this directly from Alpha Stamps, they are going to print this on using a laser, uh, laser printer so that you will not have that problem with anything running. Because one of the other options to adhere um, any of these products to a bottle is just to use glossy accents and to spread a very thin but even... Uh, uh, even amount of this on the on the uh, paper or transparency or vellum and then apply it that way but it is if you've got a Xyron machine this just makes it so much easier and you don't have to worry about any of that because it's a dry glue. Now if you're printing your own transparencies there is another option which is a product from the folks at Graphex and they make a transparency that is all, already has adhesive on it and so you don't have to worry you just cut out what you want and then uh, peel back the adhesive and you can see that here so it's got an adhesive backing so you just peel that off and then you know cut out what you want and apply that to the bottle another option is that Alpha Stamps does sell all their collage sheets in a uh, sticker version a clear sticker version so that would be another option for you I don't have a sample of that here so like I'm saying if, if it's if it's got adhesion on it already no problem cut it out put it on your bottle if not my best recommendation is to use the Xyron machine because then you don't have to worry and it will apply that even coat of, of adhesive and it won't cause the images to run, um, that sort of thing. Now I'm going to walk you through each of the sample bottles and show you what I did to them and I'm going to start with the bottles that I sprayed with the frosting and you can see the sample that, that you saw earlier. This first bottle I sprayed this with the frosting and then I this here is uh, a transparency sheet so you can see the um, how translucent it looks through that transparency and then the frosting. Down here at the bottom is just a, a black sticker and then you have two different types of lace that I ran through the Xyron machine and then uh, applied them to the bottle and then I've, I've added some little jewels hanging off here. You've got a fleur-de-lis, a key, and then this little jewel which the center comes empty and I added a, a B that uh, I colored and then inside is just a little piece of 
the um, the same collage sheet. I believe it's in the um, in just cardstock. And then I used some glossy accents and filled it in, and so that gives it a little bit of a shiny look inside that little opening. And then I've used these rosary beads to attach it, some more of the sticker. And this is one of these Tim Holtz knobs. You've seen me use those knobs before, uh, I believe in the cigar box chest tutorial, and I, th I thought they made really cute knobs, or uh, stoppers for the bottles. So that's this bottle. And here's another version a larger version. This bottle originally was a um, was a bottle that uh, uh, salad dressing came in and down here there was an indentation for the label so I just went ahead and cut out this is the vellum now you can see how the vellum looks on on the uh, on the frosted frosted spray and uh, this little uh, cute little thing here I uh, put a Masonite uh, Eiffel Tower in there and down in the bottom I have added more of the the uh, vellum collage sheet and then I kind of painted the inside edges white just so that that would pop and I'm hanging it with some more rosary beads then I hung little beads off the front of this and I can show you what this looks like before I don't have another one of these that's that's not been decorated but you can see how this looks and it had these little holes already so I ended up putting these little bead caps and round uh, round pearl beads in those little round areas and then to tie the whole thing I looked at it as kind of like a necklace for the bottle to tie the whole thing on I just wrapped the uh, black seam binding around the neck and then used it to tie off and then the top of this is a um, the, the, the stopper for this one is a old perfume bottle so I've just turned it upside down and I painted it with the I think it's called uh, aged bronze patina and I stippled it on and that's what gives it kind of the bumpy look that you see and then at the top I, I glued on a, a gold bee so that kind of gives you an idea of how both the transparency and the vellum look on the frosted bottle So the next uh, bottles that I'm going to show you are ones where I sprayed them with the chalkboard paint. Here you see this small bottle. I've applied the vellum to this bottle. If you apply the transparencies on the black, it just completely goes away. But the frostiness of the vellum on the black, you can still see the images. And then I've added um, some silver stickers. You can see here to the top to decorate it and a silver sticker here at the bottom, a fleur-de-lis with a little jewel in it and then a bead, a bead and then this is just a stick pin so the pin just goes all the way through to make my stopper on that one and then the next one, this is one I kind of showed you ahead of time the prep that I was doing for it so in this particular bottle, this was the one where I applied all the stickers to it and I also applied this brass piece which I bent um, to, to the bottle shape and then once all that was on the bottle, the clear bottle, then I sprayed the whole thing with the uh, chalkboard paint and then I came back in with some white Gilder's paste that you see here and applied that with my finger to all of the raised areas that were created from the sticker and then to all into this too so it kind of looks like it's already molded to the bottle I think that's a really cool technique so it didn't have to be stickers I mean anything that you wanted you could uh, glue some chipboard on the bottle anything that gives it a little bit of depth and then spray the whole thing and then go back in and just touch it up with the raised edges with something like the Gilder's paste is easy because it's not it's not real liquidy so you can it's easier to get it just where you want it and then of course this metal piece here these things are this was the metal piece that I used and they're very easy to bend which is nice and I think the set comes with all kinds of shapes I think there might even be more than this all kinds of shapes that you can use to bend around the bottle which I thought was neat and then of course I've tied some ribbon around here with some more little fleur-de-lis this is part of the collage sheet it's just the paper of the collage sheet uh, and then at the top I've got for a, for a stopper I've got another um, this is another perfume bottle that's turned upside down and the very top here is a, a, a bead cap that's just sitting on top of that 
The bead cap was gold originally, but I sprayed it with the, the chalkboard paint and then went over it again with a little bit of the white gilders paste. And the very top of that is just a crystal clear stick pin. Another thing, this one, I didn't want you to see it going through the top of the, um, the perfume bottle, so I did clip it off so it's shortened, so it just really just goes through the top of that bead cap. Now the last bottle I have for you with the chalkboard paint is this one. And you can see here what I've done is I've just used the cardstock uh, image of the collage sheet. I've used various ribbon and um, lace on, on the, uh, the body of the bottle. Then around it, I have bent these bees just a little bit to make them curve, these gold bees to make them curve onto the bottle. I first painted them black and I used the patina. This, these patina paints are made for metal. Um, they just work so nice that if you're doing a metal thing like this, I do, I use that, although you could use, um, you could use the just acrylic paint, but it, it, it's not as good as at holding up to, you know, getting dinged and nicked, but that is an option. And then I went over it with the silver um, Gilders paste on top of the B, and then glued those to the top of the bottle. Then a little bit of black tool, uh, some more of those gold stickers. Now the top of this is just a knob, just a wooden knob that I've painted white. And then on the very top, you can see that I have put a silver uh, filigree piece on top of that and then added the little uh, the flat backed uh, pearl to dress up the very top of that. The next one is the mercury glass and remember this is the one where we used a combination of spraying it with the looking glass spray and then um, and then uh, uh, spraying it with a combination of half and half water and vinegar to get this pitted look on on the glass and the first bottle here you can see I have wrapped um, black tool around it and then this piece here, this main piece here, is uh, a silver silver piece that I added, um, I think I rubbed it with the white um, Gilders paste to make it a little bit more gray and to bring out some of the detail. And in the center is a little, um, looks like maybe a vintage button or something that I've created and I'm going to have a follow-up tutorial for you on how to make all kinds of heirloom looking, vintage looking, jeweled, sparkled, pearled um, embellishments like that for not just bottles but other projects so that will be coming on my blog uh, in a couple of weeks and then um, I've added this ribbon the, the gathered ribbon silk ribbon here uh, you see more of the silver sticker there again this is just a perfume bottle turned upside down and then on the top I've got a bead and then I use that same silver filigree you saw in one of the other bottles on the top of that along with the bead. And then the next bottle, this is a perfume bottle actually, and um, I've added a button to a perfume bottle stopper. I've got the tassel here. The feet were off something else that I had in my stash. And then I've added silver filigree and filled that with different kinds of rhinestones and jewels. Um, and then another flat backed uh, pearl on that. And then you can see I've got more of the, since there were indentations on this bottle, I think on the top of this bottle you can really see the mercury pitting. So those are the two mercury bottles. The next one is the crackle paint uh, bottles, and here's the original bottle that I did, and here is the first example, and I'll turn this maybe a little bit on the back here, maybe you can see a little bit better. Now what I've done to bring out the crackle but still keep it uh, fairly transparent is I rubbed the crackle with the silver Gilders paste and I rubbed that on on top of that. And then on the front here, uh, this is transparency, it's from a different collage sheet called Round Things. Um, it was a fan and I just love the way the feathers looked on the crackle and with the silver uh, Gilders paste. And then some ribbon from my stash. 
this is this is another one of those kinds of things I'll show you in that follow-up tutorial where I've taken a filigree and added things to it to make it look like this little jewel piece. Then I've got some beaded beaded uh, trim here at the top, some little roses. Uh, this is a rubberized bead. We used these in the carnival, the Halloween carnival um, last year. Another bead here, and then this is another stick pin with a leaf on the top of it, and it just goes all the way through. Okay, the next one, um, the next bottle here, this one I did not color it in any way. I just left it clear and crackle looking. It, I don't think you can see it as well on the camera, but in real life this really looks like the bottle is really old and aged. And here I've just done a rub-on on top of it. So that's another option for you too. This is a Seven Gypsies rub-on. I've got a little gold crown and a jewel here. And the base of this is this piece of filigree that has these little pokey things on it. And so I've used that as the base of the bottle. Then I have uh, used a little Dresden here. Now you can see that bead cap that I used on another bottle that I painted black. Now you can see what it looks like gold. And then it's thin enough that it was easy for me to poke a hole a bigger hole, it, it has a tiny hole anyway, but a bigger hole so that I could insert the bottom of this cross in there. And you can see the cross has a loop. And I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but hanging inside of this is a fleur-de-lis. I'll have a lot of detailed pictures for you on the blog where you can see some of this better. And then this is glued inside there. And for all the gluing jobs like this where I really needed something to hold, I used um, E6000 glue. Um, because it, it, it will uh, hold up to something like this. And then you can see this is how it started and this is how it ended up. I used uh, some of the black patina paint to paint inside, so I wanted the bead to pop. And then you've got all these nice holes to hold all the different crystals. And then inside is a gold bee. So that's that one. And then the last crackle one is this bottle. might be hard for me to hold it sideways, tilted for you to see it, but um, on this bottle, what I've done is I've crackled it, but then I came in and used the Inca Gold Gilder's Paste and rubbed that onto the bottle. And I can turn it here maybe to the side and you can get a better view of what it looks like with the crackle. On the back, I've added some stickers. These were the same stickers that I used on the other bottle where I it created that embossed look. So I've used stickers on the back, then on the front, some more of the stickers, then you've got the lace on the bottom and the neck, and then these are two brass angel pieces that I've painted black and then gone over with the Gilder's paste. Then we have a, a, a medallion in the back here made of Dresden, a clock, and then this piece in the center, kind of a button piece in the center. Then the gold tool is around the neck of the bottle. And then I have a couple of jewels here, an Eiffel Tower and a bee hanging from that uh, tool. And then the top of this is a wooden finial. And what I did with the wooden finial is I used acrylic black paint first and painted it. Then I used the crackle technique on top of the black paint and crackled it. And then I rubbed in the Inca Gold paint to get the look of of the finial which becomes the stopper of the bottle. Let me turn this up to you this way. Don't know if you can get a better look of what it looks like with the crackle. Next I just want to show you some bottles where I didn't color the bottle at all. So I just left it clear and then in this case I applied the transparency on top of the clear bottle. Now the feet for the bottle, those are just brass corners, you know, turned, instead of using them as a corner, turned this way and they become feet. And then on the corners of the bottle, I've just used fold over bales that I just pinched to cover the corners. And at the top, I've added bees. All that was done with glossy accents. And then the very, very top of the bottle is another one of the Tim Holtz knobs that I'm using as a stopper. The next bottle, it's the same bottle but done a little bit differently. Um, at the bottom here for the base, 
I have got a wooden egg cup and I painted it with black acrylic paint to, to, to act as the feet. And then the bottle I have, um, you can't see it very well there, but I'll turn here. I've used uh, a transparency of a circular uh, wrought iron looking piece that came from uh, the same round things collage sheet as the fan did. Then I've tied, I did that on all the sides, then I've tied some black and white ribbon. And then you have the silver fleur de lis in the center. And for the stopper, I have a combination of this marbled bead and this jewel bead, and there is a stick pin going all the way through, and a bead here. This is, um, you've seen me do this before on the, on the blog, make your own stick pin, where you just start with the metal, metal straight piece, and then you add all, all the bits and pieces that you want to make a straight pin, or in this case, to make a stopper for the bottle. And then uh, the last thing would be the black tassel. The next bottle, I'm using vellum instead on a clear bottle. And I've got the little box feet in the corner, um, the vellum. I've got a little bit of, um, this is uh, a little bit of Dresden that I just barely inked with a little bit of black to make it look more vintage. And then uh, some ribbon here in the middle. Then the, the top here, I've got that same piece that I used as a base. It's a smaller version. But instead, um, I flipped it this way to cover the top. And I've made the hole larger so that the tip of this piece here could fit in. And this piece I jazzed it up by putting a piece of filigree in this little opening. This just happened to fit perfectly. And this comes in a set of several different kinds of gold filigree. And then I also have this filigree butterfly that I've bent and I've uh, painted it black again with the, with the patina and then gone over it with the gold um, Inca gold gilders paste and then bent that and attached that, and then the last touch was this gold bead. And the last bottle here that's clear is this one. Now this is cool because it's a triangular bottle, and I've used the Tim Holtz box feet, or, or corner feet or whatever, foundations I think is what they call it, foundations feet, for the corners. And they don't fit, you know, absolutely smoothly, but there's a ledge on the bottom, so, you know, it doesn't matter that they're not flush with the bottle. They, they still function and do what they need to do. And I've added some white Gilders paste to this just to make those, um, all the detail pop more. Uh, on this bottle, I have added vellum to the clear glass, which you can see here. And I've just cut out panels. I didn't try to wrap the whole thing, just cut out panels for each section. And then I've got this jeweled piece here, which is a combination of some filigree, another one of these buttony bead looking things that I've made for the center here, which I, again, I will cover that in a later tutorial. And then we've got um, more of the rosary beads, this little metal uh, 25, which I thought looked very French, and chain, and then the bead at the bottom. I've used uh, ribbon here at the neck, and then the top of this is another um, is another egg cup turned upside down for the knob. I've covered it with uh, black and silver stickers, and at the very top, you can see I've added filigree, and this just happened to be a, a, a button from my stash. And here I just wanted a, a quick picture. I, I didn't have this on hand when I was talking about it before, but this is a little egg cup that I used both as a stand in one case and then as a stopper in the other. And the last thing, I just kind of decided to throw this one in just to give you another option on the bottles. Um, and that is I used patterned tissue paper. Um, and I just glued this tissue paper on using um, Mod Podge. And then after I just tore it into strips and, and glued it on however you like. I didn't bunch it up or crinkle it up like, like you've seen me do in other projects. And then after I got that all on there, then I used the Inca Gold Gilders paste to just rub that on to, um, to, the, the, uh, to the paper and give it a little color. And the paper is this stuff. This is Tim Holtz Ideology. And it's just got all kinds of patterns, collaged patterns on this. So. This makes, this looks, I thought looked really good on the bottle. And then for other things on the bottle, um, I added this jewel piece. You know, it looks like this before I jazzed it up with the beads hanging and then I used some black jewels 
in the little openings. The whole thing is tied on with some ribbon. And then there's a, I cut down the cork so the cork barely fit in the top of the bottle, painted it gold, and then added the B. And that's the same B you've seen me use on the other bottles. Again, I painted it black and then went over it with the, uh, the gold, Inca gold, Gilder's paste to create the color. And then you have a piece of filigree. And that filigree is from the set I think I showed you earlier, these that I used um, for the one bottle. I believe this round piece comes in that set. And then I have this little button clock in the center. Uh, and then you see that I've got the ribbon attached at the bottom. So I hope I've given you um, lots of ideas on how to decorate the bottles. I will have detailed pictures of each of these bottles on my website and complete supply lists of everything I use. Most of the products that I use came from Alpha Stamps. And other than a few things from my stash, like perfume bottles and whatnot, um, pretty much on every bottle, most of the uh, products that I used are available. So have fun altering your own bottles.